Dina here with another video from Jember Designs. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to cook a very filling, very nutritious, very easy meal. It takes one pan, minimal effort, and you end up with either an omelette or a frittata. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. They're both very tasty and easy to cook. I've used in my video a mixture of fresh and frozen veg. You can use all frozen, you can use all fresh, it's entirely up to you. It's basically whatever you've got in your fridge, you can put in within reason. Be careful using too soggy a vegetable like a courgette. It might make the omelette go a little bit runny. Um, you could slice tomatoes on the top if you wanted to add a little bit of extra colour. The world's your oyster when it comes to this kind of meal. I challenge myself to do it all in one pan, one, uh, one frying pan. Um, it would have made it a little bit easier if I'd had two because I did do quite a lot of vegetables. I ended up with a frittata that was big enough to serve four people and we had it with just some oven chips and some baked beans. Packed full of vegetables, packed full of nutrients, very easy. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching. So let's get started on how to cook your omelette, otherwise known as frittata. This is my recipe. Keep it simple. Eggs, veg, and if you've got it, some ham or bacon, if you want to add that it's a bit of flavour. Salt, pepper, herbs, always come in useful. If you haven't got those, brown sauce works a treat. Adds that extra little bit of zest and flavour to it. Um, you'll also need a little bit of oil. I use a fry light because it's low calorie. Um, just to stop it sticking in your pan. That's it, that's all you need. I'm starting by cooking a jacket potato in the microwave. Um, you've got to have it cooked before you put it to the omelette because there's no way it will cook while it's in the omelette. Microwave it while you're preparing the rest of your veg and it'll be done. Just wash it and stab it a few times with your knife. This is the vegetables that I gathered for my frittata come omelette. Frozen peas, a pepper, some frozen leeks you can see here and then I'm also going to add to it, oh the excitement's building, can't wait for this, some frozen spinach, packed full of iron. You don't need a lot, it adds that extra little bit of flavour. Finally, mushrooms. I've run out of fresh, normally I would put fresh mushrooms in, um, but the frozen ones are fine when they're cooked in a frittata. You can't really tell much of a difference, to be honest. Now then, the first piece of vegetable I'm going to cook is my onion. So, once I've finally managed to extract it from the net, peel it off first, chop the top and the bottom off, and then you'll find it really easy to get that tough outer coating off the onion. I'll just peel all that rubbish off. And we'll put, get rid of that and put it in the bin. I'm going to chop this into quite small pieces. I didn't spend ages on chopping this onion. I like my veg quite chunky. The way to do an onion, half it and then hold it like I'm holding it and cut it into thin slithers one way, then turn it around 90 degrees, cut it again and you end up with quite small pieces of onion. Um, if you've got a slightly larger knife it would make it easier. I just couldn't be bothered getting one out of the cupboard. There we go, that's half the onion come done and there's the full onion chopped. Next the pepper. Take your knife and just run it around the stalk like I'm doing. If you pull that stalk out now, you'll get all of the innards with the seeds, more or less, clean and complete. And now I'm just slicing up my pepper. Just doing the vertical stripe strips like this. And then I'll turn it through 90 degrees and chunk it into little pieces, similar sized pieces to the onion. When all of that's chopped up, it's time to start cooking. I'm going to just quickly finish off that pepper. Okay, that's my basic. At this point my potato was cooked, so I've got it there cooling slightly on the side. Spraying my frying pan with a little bit of fry light. You could use olive oil if you preferred. You could use any kind of oil. Whatever you've got in your cupboard. And I'm just putting in my onion and my pepper 
to start it off cooking. Really just wanted it to soften a little bit. Because um, this is raw veg, you do need to cook it a little bit before you add all the other stuff. Now the potato is still very, very hot. I'm going to start chunking it down. And as I'm chunking it down, because it's been done in the microwave, the skin absolutely pops off really easily. It's a faster way than peeling, I think, sometimes. If you peel it before you microwave, you will find your potato dries out a little bit. I don't like the texture of potato done in the microwave, so I do it like this. And I'm just using my knife, and I'm just taking off the skin from that potato. And then cutting it into smaller chunks. It'll sit in my omelette nicely and get rid of all the rubbish. Now then, that veg is beginning just to soften off a little bit. Keep it stirring. I want it to brown a little bit, but not too much. So keep it stirring. And once it's got a little bit of colour on it, I'm going to start adding the other frozen vegetables to it. Once I think it's nearly cooked, because the other frozen veg won't need as long, they just need warming through. If you've got something like um, a big chunk of broccoli, so you need to put that in a bit sooner. I've put the peppers and onions to the side of the pan where it's cooler, and now I'm putting the frozen veg in the middle in the hot part of the pan. So I'm just putting them in there to start thawing out in the mushrooms, putting whatever you fancy. Really is up to you what you put in your pan, whatever you like. Go in here. And I'm just packing that pan full of vegetables. There's loads going in there. I'll keep adding and adding until I've got what I feel is enough. Nice handful of peas. And there's a big block of frozen peas there. They took ages to break down. They were a nightmare in the end. They were the thing that slowed the whole process down, that big block of peas. The spinach soon breaks down and cooks through. So I'm just going to leave all that sitting on the heat for the frozen veg to warm through. I'm trying to break those peas down. And I use a jug with pouring spout. Use this is such a useful gadget. I can't tell you how, how useful this jug is with the pouring spout. It's big enough to whisk in. I make all sorts in here. All I'm putting in here now are five eggs. I said there's a meal for four people and I only used five eggs. Very economical. Um, I'm going to throw in a load of herbs, mixed herbs. I don't bother with lots of different types of herbs. I just throw in a load of mixed. Salt and pepper. If you haven't got all of that, just put a dash of brown spot sauce or Tabasco sauce or bovril or marmite, anything like that will add extra flavour. Give it a good whisk round. And now, just to make life easier, I'm putting the potato in because I want to make sure that potato is coated in the egg. Um, I don't want any raw, not raw, but bits of potato sticking out of the omelette at the end. I want them all coated in egg. Just still breaking down. Those peas are not cooperating. So while I'm still waiting for that frozen veg to warm through, I've got some ham. Again, I'm just going to slice this up into small pieces. So, cut it one way. Cut it together, turn it 90 degrees, and cut it the other. Dead simple. Doesn't take a minute. Okay. Those peas have finally decided to break down. I had to leave it a couple of minutes here because of those peas. Now, once the veggies all warmed through, I added my ham. Now my eggy potato mix goes in. And now I'm going to squeeze, for want of a better word, everything together so it's got a nice flat surface. This will actually end up as the bottom of my omelette because I turn it upside down at the end. So I'm going to put, make sure the potato is sitting in amongst all the veg and everything's got a nice layer of egg over it. I've turned the heat down now on the hob. Up until this point it was on nearly maximum heat. I've turned it down to a medium heat. If you have it on high the bottom of the omelette will burn before the top cooks. I put a cover over the top just to keep the heat in. It's a very deep omelette at this point and I want it, the top to set. Um, so I'm trying to trap the heat on that top to cook the top as well as the bottom took about 
three or four minutes for this to cook for the egg to cook through with that on. Once it had set on the top, I popped it, I'm just checking there with the spatula, that it's set on the top. Now I'm popping it under a hot grill just to brown that top off to make sure it's cooked. At this point, if you've got some cheese, you could put a sprinkling of cheese on the top and then that top, that would be the top of the omelette. You wouldn't have to turn it over. I haven't got any cheese, we've run out. So my omelette has, or frittata, hasn't got any cheese in it. it tastes perfectly all right the way it is. One of the purposes of putting cheese on the top is that it does give that nice brown finish. It's not so much for flavour, it is for the what it looks like when it's been browned under the grill. Now then, now for the fun part. I've got to turn, turn it out onto the plate. This is where sometimes it all goes horribly wrong. I'm loosening it off with my spatula. Bring the plate up a little bit and try and turn it. I can't actually put the plate over the frying pan because it is very, very hot. And now it's just a case of neatly to up on the plate for the presentation of it. And there we have it. A gluten-free, healthy, low-calorie, very nutritious frittata. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye now.